main thing we're interested in here is that. That is a Caterpillar 955 track excavator. It is a track loader. Here's the tracks. You got the big loader arm here. And here's the bucket. Yeah, check that caterpillar out on that grill there. The back of the tractor that I'm looking at, the old cat logo. That's the loader arm, that's the bucket right there. Behind all that we had an extra fuel tank slash seat assembly. Looks like uh, one of the, the top gear shifting covers, some of the shifters, basically some extra parts for the loader. Here's the first real good look at it. First thing I see is uh, this is a track shoe basically one of these pieces right here these are shoes individual ones that can be replaced this is a track shoe that is basically pinched between the hydraulic cylinder and the loader arm Positive battery terminal, ground slash negative, and they've just got the ground attached to the body here, and then the this runs to the starter, I believe. And so I'm going to wrap this up with some tape so that it's not accidentally grounding itself out, and then we're going to go ahead and use their wire connections for now. So this system is actually. 24 volt system and so this battery pack can be 12 volt or 24 volt it's made by jump and carry and they make some awesome packs and i love this thing that'll work for now Right, so here's the nasty seat. It's falling apart. So this is a fuel tank, fuel fill right there. And the gear shifter here. These control the driving. I believe these are the bucket. 
and those levers and knobs control the pony motor. And so a pony motor is essentially a small motor, which is right here. Right there, there's a small gasoline motor that runs, it starts the big diesel engine. And so we're gonna put some gas in it and then see what we can do from that. Okay, so oil in this pony motor is uh, low. Actually, I can't even see any on the dipstick. So I'm trying to figure out where it goes in. I figured it out, it's on the other side. So this is the pony motor. This is the motor that jump starts the big diesel engine. Air cleaner, fuel shut off. But as of right this second, that motor has no oil in it. So you get some oil. So I can go further with uh, trying to get this guy running. All right, so we got it all fueled up, oiled up, and let's see if we got it. All right, I wonder if we have spark. All right, let's pull this plug out. All right, let's see if this baby will fire. The pony motor, not the big one. It might help if I turn the gas on. All right, well, I think it's time to take the carburetor off. So that's an oil bath type air filter. dead bugs. Not too bad though. So
So that was the oil fill for the pony motor, which is right there. So I'm gonna put some, uh, put a rag in this hole so we don't get any crap in there. So I brought brake. I've got Ben, brake, and destroy. This one's brake. I'm not losing any bolts in the belly of this beast. Gotcha. Working on taking the uh, carburetor off so I can clean it. All right, I got a little makeshift workbench out here. And we're gonna take a look at this carburetor and see if we can clean it up. Rust in the bottom of the bowl there. Not too bad though. The float still moves. It's dirty in here, but not crazy bad. We got it cleaned up, sprayed all the jets out, 
These two plugs at the bottom had a bunch of sediment build up in them because they were hollow on the inside, so I scraped that out, cleaned all these jets, got the bowl good enough. Still got a little rust, surface rust in there, but I think it'll run fine. Guess we'll find out, right? Got a Zenith carburetor. Ah, so I'm not the first one to use starting fluid. That'll do for now.
I brought some hardware. This is my rubber washers and miscellaneous stuff like that. This little fuel shut off has this rubber o-ring that's starting to get all cracked up. So let me see if I can find another one. That one might work. Yeah, that'll do. Fits in there real nice and snug. Not coming off. And then this will cinch up tight and seal up on it. Goes back together like this. Give that a try. So right here are two bolt holes, one here and one there, that you would bolt the, the choke and the throttle cable, or, or uh, linkage, are supposed to bolt right there. They, one's broken here, and I think there's one broken, that one's broken too. It wasn't connected to anything, it was just kind of flopping around in there, and so... I think I'm gonna have to get them out so I can at least so I can screw that in a little bit more uh, permanently. I don't really want it flopping around like it's been. Well, maybe that one's not actually full or broken, just full of oil and junk. I'm gonna grab a bolt. Well, that one's fine. So that'll be good. So I just got to get this one out. All right, so we're going to work on getting this broken bolt out right here. Drum roll. Moment of truth. Oh, I think it's going. Yeah, baby. Just gotta work it in and out. Boom shakalaka. Yeah, buddy. There's 
wild turkey right here. See a turkey right here? All right, now we're going to put the oil basically the cover for the oil uh input back back on. So this lever here on the bottom is the throttle and it's a little different because this throttle is full throttle all the way pushed in so when you pull it out you're actually uh, throttling down and uh, lowering your RPMs and then the choke is full choke when you pull it all the way out and choke off with all the way in. So in order to mount this panel back where it goes right here. You have to get this rod through the panel, but then you gotta sneak the panel back behind this tab. And there's enough other places to bolt, you know, here, here, two at the bottom, two on this plate here, that I'm gonna cut that tab off right here so that it'll be easier for me to mount the panel. If I need it later, I can always weld another one on there, but for now, Coming off. The old fuel line that went from the gas tank to the carburetor was getting real brittle. So I brought some chunks.
So the oil in the pony motor is about as thin as fuel. And so what can happen at these old motors is that the gasoline leaks into the oil over the rings if it's not shut off every time, thins out the oil and apparently it's very bad on the motor. So I'm hoping this is another culprit as to why it isn't wanting to start without ether. So I figured I'd drain it and put some new oil in and give it another shot. We got new spark plugs. Give it a try this time. I can't believe it idles well.